When it comes to Clipper, I have barely scratched the surface in terms of knowing exactly what I'm doing, but I am slowly learning. And as with everything I do, when I learn something new, I share it with others. That way I can hopefully get to help others, get some feedback myself, or just get roasted in the comments for doing it completely wrong. Today I am going to show you how to enable the color change feature on printers running Clipper by using the stock BQ Horicon, a 3D printer which runs on Clipper out of the box. It's a fun little machine, quiet, decent sized, and at 350 euros, it's a very good entry point into the Clipper world. Clipper can be a bit intimidating, at least it is for me. With my upcoming build of the LDO Voron 2.4, it's time for me to really delve into Clipper now. And while it has come a long way in terms of user friendliness, it's still an extremely customizable firmware. So most of the time, all you have are the bare bones functions to make the printer work with any other non-standard features needed to be added by the user. In this case, one of those features, it's the color change function, or as most of us know it, the M600G code. Clipper uses somewhat of a different language than Marlin, and while it recognizes the basic G-code commands of movements to print a model, it might not recognize some specific commands issued by certain slicers. Let's take Prusa Slicer for instance. Once you slice a file, like this quick little open builds keychain that I designed, you have the option to select a specific layer height and very quickly add a point in the model where you want to change the color of the filament. You simply press the plus sign, Reslice and the exported G code will automatically have an M600 line included at the specific layer height chosen. The M600 is a Marlin command which tells the printer to pause, move away from the print, eject the filament, wait for a new filament to be inserted, and continue the print. Now, Marlin based printers recognize this command because the instructions associated with that code are already pre compiled within the firmware itself. However, when it comes to Clipper, an M600 command is just gibberish and therefore just gets ignored. So the printer will simply keep going along printing until the job is done. What you can do, however, is teach Clipper what to do when the M600 command appears in the G code, thanks to macros. Macros are a set of instructions that tell the printer what to do when a specific G code appears, which Clipper may not recognize. And if this looks confusing, don't worry, I, I totally get you. This is where it may get intimidating to me as well. However, the Clipper community has got you back on this. GitHub has a macro repository which you can simply copy and paste from to make your life easier. Once you go to the sample macro page, listed in the video description, you will see a long list of code. Scrolling almost halfway through it, you will see the filament change macro. Highlight the code that is shown on the screen and copy it. Once done, go to the user interface of your 3D printer. In the case of the BQ Horicon, it's the main sale web UI. Locate the configuration files of the printer and open the printer config files. Then simply paste the macro inside it. I tend to paste it under the rest of the macros to keep myself somewhat organized. Simply click on save and restart the printer. Once the machine restarts, you should be good to go, running the same exact G code I had previously run without any color change. You can see that when the printer now reaches that specific layer height for the filament change, the printer will pause. It will move the print head away from the print, retract the filament and await for instructions. You then simply remove the current filament, reinsert the new filament, and in the case of the BQ Horicon, not sure if it's different on any other machine, you go to the SD card menu and click on resume print. The print head will then simply move back to its original position and continue printing. Now, while I blabbed on for quite a bit, it was actually that simple. You can, of course, modify the macro to have it do specific functions or movements, but that's not something I will get into today, mainly because I, I don't know how. So what else do you think I should experiment with on Clipper and possibly do video about? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.